you know, we talk often about scams and we talk about how, well, you know, don't click the link. If it sounds too good to be true, um, you probably haven't won the lottery or you that overdue bill from Qantas or the power company, it's not actually them. You should definitely check with the retailer themselves. But how do you look after cybersecurity when your toaster has become, is connected to your Wi-Fi? Technology experts expect there will be more than 41 billion Internet of Things devices. Devices that are connected to the Internet. And that's the number expected in the next few years. They allowed you to control everything from your lights, your toaster, your front doorbell. They're pretty popular. Uh, but are there some vulnerabilities? Uh, Moses Sanabria is from ID Care. It's an identity and cyber security service. Moses, thanks for your time this morning. Pleasure. How are you? I'm really good. Is your toaster connected to the Wi-Fi? Uh, my toaster is not connected to the Wi-Fi, uh, but you know, uh, incredible amount of devices are. Um, you, you, you know, all of these organisations that produce these devices, they're all intended to give us a, a good customer experience. But unfortunately, a lot of them. Uh, um, are doing more things in the background than just, you know, ensuring that your toast doesn't get burnt. Yeah, it's because it's, I guess the initial part of it is it's it's fun. It's fun to be able to control your lights from your phone or see who's at the doorbell at your front door, wherever you are, because it comes up on, on your phone via a, a video feed. And there's practical ramifications too. If if someone is doing the wrong thing at, at your door, you might have the video of it. So those are the, the good intentions that have gone into creating these internet-connected devices. What's what's the flip side? Where can it go wrong? It, and it does go wrong, unfortunately. So there's a dark side to all these dumb devices that are sitting in the corner of your house. Unfortunately... The companies that produce them have the best intentions for uh, nothing malicious to occur. Um, but what occurs is that there is very clever people that look at a way of obtaining remote uh, code executions or remote way of accessing these devices with the intent of not controlling the device in itself, but getting a better understanding of who you are and what other devices are associated with one vulnerability to hop on and hijack or bridge over to your Wi-Fi network which may allow access to other devices that are associated with that network. So it's happened with something as simple as, um, you know, as a light bulb. Um, so through a, a simple device, um, if the organization hasn't been able to patch it or update it correctly, and let's face it, majority of the times we're so eager to unpack a device and put it into use that no one ever changes the default settings that these devices come uh, come with. So we leave ourselves open to having those remote code executions and you know people being able to open remotely our doors or listen into conversations or scare the hell out of us by um, dimming the lights or um, or accepting a package on our behalf so how do you put security protections in place moses i mean how do you how do you put a vpn on your sound system or a light bulb yeah the, the problem that exists is that you know, um, once the devices are installed, um, there's all these things that you can do, but they're, they're very technical or they're very involved to get it to a point where there's a minimal viable security on that device. The default settings, no one ever accesses those um, settings and the connections that uh, we use to make those devices are all relaying back data to anonymous services, uh, servers. Um, uh, so... It's not easy. It's involved. So say, for example, if you want Siri to stop relaying back uh, to third-party servers your conversations or your, you know, what you're asking, it actually doesn't, uh, you can't find it in your general settings in Siri. You have to download a free app um, and find, you know, uh, uh, that uh, trigger to stop it um, uh, downloading or sending uh, those conversations to an anonymous server. Now, that for the average Joe Blow it's very difficult to do. So there is a lot of education that still needs to be put out there so people understand, yet, yet that's fantastic, you can see who's at your door, 
um, but you may want to, you know, put a Mac certificate on your Wi-Fi so only that person or only yourself can access that service. How you've been doing some research into uh, those voice controlled home assistants. You mentioned Siri there. There's there's Alexa and, and Google Home and, and so forth. Yep. Who listens the most? Um, so they all are, are promoting now that they have stopped listening. Um, the reality is that it's all about at the customer experience. So they hide behind the fact that they're trying to improve the keyword searching or the keyword activation when we say, hey, Google or whatever it may be. Um, so what they do is they get snippets or random snippets of that information that goes off and gets analyzed. They're all now saying that they've stopped uh, having third parties, um, physical people analyze those snippets of information. That gets fed all back into this neurological network that improves that keyword spotting. So that's what they're trying to do. They hide behind the fact that um, you know, they're trying to improve your customer experience. So when you say, hey, Google, you know, um, do this or do that, you, you get that correct or, or correct response, not a false response or not even activated. So they are all equally listening. They listen because, as you can see, the rate at which products are being developed, that's, um, you know, it was four years ago we had a very basic uh, a microphone entering our house. Now there are so many sensors in these new devices mm. that some are fan some some are great. Some are detecting you know a buildup of uh, of gases in a house and and you get that alert and you're you're safe. But others are uh, you know others are, are listening uh, and are doing what we call false accepts, which are snippets of information that you know we don't understand uh, what is being spit out on the other end. So. The concern that a lot of organizations have with these with this technology is one is at the rate that it goes but what data points are being spit out about yourself so you know what what is this neurological network learning i mean they have more data points than a government has on ourselves you know they know that we take one hour and five minutes to get home that we're terrible at doing handiwork in the house and that we always uh, are not very good at cooking you know there's but do they know that our political tendencies, our advertising or our shopping tendencies? So there's all this incredible amount of data that's being fed into this monster or this machine. And the consequences are still, you know, unknown. So what can someone who, they've, they've gone to the hardware shop, uh, sure, they've gone to the hardware shop, they've gone and purchase like a brand new set of uh, light bulbs they can control with their mobile phone or a brand new doorbell that uh, is video controlled what what's the extra step they can take right now to ensure they're a little bit safer and more secure so the extra step there's there's a couple of real quick steps and I, I won't drive your listeners crazy the first thing is to get an understanding of what the product does um, no one has time to read 20 pages of terms and conditions or privacy. So get an understanding of what it's connecting to and how it's doing it. So protect your Wi-Fi. So don't just allow any, you know, the default settings of when your, your router or your Wi-Fi comes. Two is update the product. So there will be maybe, you know, that product could be sitting on the shelf for a year. And since subsequently, since that year, there's been 10 vulnerabilities that have been spat out and there's an update or a patch for that product. Update it immediately. That will help the product with all these vulnerabilities. So there is an incredible market of bug hunting. So if you look, for example, at uh, Google, they will pay you $31,000 if you find a problem with, their, with a remote code execution into Google Nest, for example. So you could imagine there's backdoors and vulnerabilities that exist, and they're still trying to discover them. Now... Uh, you know, uh, a malicious outsider who finds a vulnerability on a uh, product is not going to put up their hand and say, oh, there's a, a vulnerability on the product. They're going to exploit it. And they may, uh, you know, uh, show other people on how to uh, take advantage of that exploit. By the time the company finds out, it could have, you know, it could have damaged or the damage is, is basically being done. So patching is really important or updating that particular product. Moses, it's been absolutely fascinating to have a chat with you. Thanks for your time this morning. Very much appreciated. Fantastic. Thank you. Moses Sanabria from ID Care. There are